Well then, the new Mustang has been out for a couple months now in the hands of your average Joe reviewers and performance shops. And at first, of course, like everyone, you know, the new Mustang checks some boxes and completely unchecks other boxes. But at the end of the day, the whole point of a Mustang is it's a performance car. Like it's a fun performance car. That's his whole roots. That's what it's supposed to be. And that was kind of the disappointing thing when the new S650 Mustang first came out the performance that was being shown was a bit lackluster. Stock for stock, it's pretty much the same, maybe, if not in most cases, just a tad bit slower than the previous S550 generation Mustang. So yeah, it kind of sucked when you realize that you're spending more money for the same performance or less. So it was a bit disappointing until now. So there's a video going around the internet from a shop called Justin's Performance Center and they happen to be back in my home state of Maryland where they've specialized in coyote powered Mustangs for quite some time now. And of course, they've gotten their hands on a 2024 Mustang GT and is absolutely blowing the internet up right now with what they are achieving with their car. So obviously, it was going to take the help of the aftermarket to get the new Mustang where we thought it should be. So just jumping right into it, yeah, their new car with nothing but, and, and I know as a total, these parts can add up and they can be pretty expensive, but we'll look at the bigger picture later, which is why this is so impressive. But for now, uh, their car is drag pack, uh, some weight reduction, like they still got most of their interior, all the door panels are still there. They only have like a rear seat delete, passenger seat out, and a lightweight uh, driver's seat. It's actually pretty tastefully done as far as the weight reduction goes. With a driver and passenger seat is a completely normal streetable interior. Long tube headers, a torque converter, and a hefty shot of nitrous from a wet system. They have achieved nine and a half seconds in the quarter. What? And I, I know what you're thinking. You're like, like uh, no, this ain't impressive because S550 cars have done that. Yeah, they, they have. I'm not saying they have. In fact, you can go on YouTube right now after my video and look up uh, nitrous only Mustang GT quarter mile. And you'll can see a lot of mostly stock cars with nitrous are running low tens and in the extremes high nine in a lot of cases. So yeah, uh, they were doing the same thing except the big difference is most of those cars were tuned to run with nitrous. This shop's car is not tuned at all because we don't have tuning available. There's no tuning available for the 2024 Mustang yet, if ever. I'm sure it's coming at some point, but not now. And yet that are still running 9.5 in the quarter. That to me is mind boggling. They could definitely still be in the nine seconds full interior with a normal driver's seat and passenger seat with nothing but the drag pack and you know the rest of the mods. Of course, I'm sure a more street friendly exhaust would be nice. I still think with how they're progressing with this, they can get nines. I bet you they could have done nines with a full street exhaust, full street interior, uh, hell, I mean, maybe even, a, you know, stock fronts with a, a radial rear. I think they still could get the nines because the way the car is progressing is unbelievable. It's not so much the numbers that it's running because, like I said, S550 cars were running similar numbers. It's the fact that it's doing it without a tune. That part is mind boggling. Um, you know, to me, that says a lot about how these new cars are running. So it doesn't seem like there's a lot of torque limiting on the new programming, the new strategy for the S650 Mustangs, at least the GT, because generally that's the problem you run into. You know, you start adding a bunch of power that the car is not trying to make and it, it's going to start limiting your torque. It's going to start pulling back like, hey, something ain't right. We're pulling stuff back. But 
no, their car is not pulling back. I mean, I'm sure it would run even better with a tune, but it's not, re it's doing what it's supposed to doing. It just keeps going. Like the more nitrous and fuel they feed it, it's just doing what it needs to do and it's going. The fact that it's adjusting timing, you know, for a nitrous setup safely for, I mean, it's almost a 200 shot of nitrous. It's, it's, it's crazy how, how, how the new cars are running and, and it's crazy how well they run and how well they self adjust to different things. And I've actually showcased this in my personal car in S550 generation and uh, you know, showing how adaptive these newer Ford uh, PCMs are. And it seems like the S650 is even more adaptive, a lot more adaptive. So it, I am impressed, honestly. It wasn't until now, seeing this car, I'm impressed. So it makes me wonder that if their car is self-adjusting that much, obviously they're adding fuel in through with the nitrous. So if you made an aux fuel system, I wonder if you can get away with force induction on these cars without tuning. You know, you might have to have a small standalone just to adjust the fueling or a fuel controller or something to adjust the fueling. Seeing how adaptive the car is, at least in this case with nitrous, you could probably do it with boost too. So that's interesting. No tune required performance. Didn't see that one coming. So I don't know, I'm impressed. I, it wasn't until seeing this car do what it's doing, and I've seen it, like they've been working on it for a couple months now. You know, they did like tens, and then it was like the mid tens, and then the nitrous, and then tens without nitrous, and I was like, eh, okay, well, S550's been there. It wasn't until they did the 9.8 and then backed it with a 9.5. I'm like, okay, I'm paying attention now. I am paying attention. And I think a lot of people now are paying attention because this is not something you normally see. It really isn't. And it just is crazy. It's nuts. So I'm actually really curious to know what more they can get out of it. Like how far can they really push this thing without tuning it? Because that's kind of been a thing I've been trying to do for a long time, you know? Like how far can you push a car without actually changing the strategy? So this, of course, really intrigues me. And my eyes are glued to what they are doing. And I'm curious to know how far they can take this car. And I'm also curious to know if this same type of, uh, you know, adaptive strategy that the GT has is also the same on the EcoBoost models because that would make things a lot interesting too in the EcoBoost world. But we'll have to wait and see. Let me know what you think. Put your thoughts in the comments below. Let's talk about it because Everyone's certainly going to be talking about this, but anyways, let's wrap it up here for this video. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Share it with everyone you know if you want to see more content like this and you haven't already. Go ahead, subscribe to the channel. Keep a lookout for the next Cars Creative video.